classes that do not count towards certificates and degrees. That's where more than half of all community college students and two-thirds of black and Latino students are placed. They're coming here with a great emphasis on, on making their lives better. And the first thing we say to them is, not so fast there. You're not really in college. You can't take college level courses. You've got to take these developmental courses. You will not be able to even go to the community college and get college credit bearing coursework. We have this fiction that our kids can go to community college. You can go there even without a high school diploma until they have to go take the basic skills tests and the placement tests. And then they're channeled into remedial classes. Classes where in community college and even in four year colleges they're actually doing high school over again. They're not earning college credit for it. You know what they're getting? A whole lot of debt. And so what we're seeing is patterns of black and brown young people that do get access to college, that never get out with a degree or a credential. Instead, they get out with some credits and a whole lot of student loan debt that you can't even get rid of in bankruptcy. Other nations are doing better in higher entertainment than we are. And the one thing I know for sure, we cannot let other nations pass us by at increasing rates in higher ed attainment and be competitive. We're not going to be able to do that. So we have to have more of our students finish their high school experiences truly ready to start into higher ed without significant remediation. And we have to give them strategies and tools so once they start, they will finish. And that is where a big problem is currently in the system. I, we are co very convinced that if we are more focused on these reading and writing strategies will enable students to finish with a better degree, to start college with less need for remediation, and to be more comfortable in doing college work. And that's one of the, the issues that's very important for determining whether students stay incomplete or not. A video game is just an assessment. All you do is get assessed every moment as you try to solve a problem. And if you don't solve it, the game says you failed. Try again, and then you solve it. And then you have a boss, which is a test, and you pass the test. I mean, games essentially are a form of assessment, the thing that is probably the most painful, ludicrous part of schooling. Uh, but in a, in a game, it's a lot of fun, right, because it's handled in a very different way. You sit down and talk to a game player about what they're doing, an incredible narrative will come out of their mouth about the complex problem that they're working on. Um, a, a set of specialist vocabulary will spew out of their mouth that you would imagine any English teacher would be very prideful to kind of hear. Life Tracks, a game for learning, managed by a small nonprofit organization and a steering committee made up of educators and students from participating high schools and colleges. Learners will embark on missions and will be encouraged to attempt these missions many times until competency is demonstrated. All work will be captured in an e-portfolio that will be assessed by the members of the Lifetrack Steering Committee. Let's see what the Lifetrack series will be like. Sport Tracks, the pilot game planned in the Lifetrack series, will focus on real-life sports to appeal to males and will start with baseball. Students will play a game that challenges them to complete a series of missions, in this case related to baseball. Baseball is a natural starting theme because it is rich in statistics and it is interesting to a wide range of students from different socioeconomic, geographical and cultural backgrounds. Each mission will involve one or more student learning outcomes for math, English, critical thinking, problem solving and teamwork. Major League Baseball has become too rich and corrupt. Fans are losing their connection with overpaid stars of the game who apparently feel the use of performance enhancing drugs does not present a moral or ethical issue. You've been hired by a wealthy donor to be the general manager of a team in a new league. Your challenge is to draft a roster of 25 players, manage a salary cap, form a working relationship with the city, and finish with a record of 500 or above.
you must submit a proposal to the local city council for a new stadium. Your original plan for the stadium was considered to be too large. The community wants you to resize your planned stadium, reducing the center field to 400 feet, but with 20% fewer seats and 15% fewer parking spaces. They need to know how much total area the stadium will take. And at $30 per square foot, how much less is it going to cost to build this stadium than what you had originally planned? As general manager, you must draft your initial player roster from existing MLB rosters and free agents in the other leagues. The league has given everyone a rather complicated contract template that general managers may use as is or may modify and use as the format for their contracts. You have to prepare a contract offer for a player that tells the player what the term of his contract will be, his salary, the length of his contract, what position he's being drafted for, and so on. Down.